211277 tells you which cameras support the two adjustments that are available in ProRes RAW. Those are the color temperature adjustment and the ISO exposure offset. As you see here, this note has not yet been updated for Olympus cameras, um, but it gives you an idea um, of what adjustments are supported by which uh, camera model. As of today, the only brands that support color temperature adjustment in Final Cut Pro are Panasonic, and Zcam. So if you do require extensive color temperature correction uh, of your footage, for example, um, if you take underwater footage, these are the brands uh, that you really need to uh, look for. We will see now what is uh, supported uh, by Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III and EM1X. Some sample files on Atomos Academy that you can download. Um, that's where I got the samples for this um, clip. Um, they are available until the 2nd of January 2021, so make sure uh, to download them before they get removed if you are uh, interested in assessing uh, this camera. Um, the other thing that is interesting, um, is obviously some, some, something explains you know, how the shot has been done, uh, etc. Um, but the other thing that is interesting is to understand the gear list that has been used. And if you scroll, will tell you here, um, is using <clears throat> EM1X for the whole clip and EM1 Mark III and lenses used are the Olympus 1240 2.8 Pro and the Olympus 714 2.8 Pro with obviously the Atomos Ninja 5. Um, they did use some ND filter and Promise filter uh, from Nissin which gives uh, the footage a specific effect on blooming highlights and also softening uh, the excessive sharpness of the of the footage. So this is important when you look at those clips because without this equipment you will not be able to produce the kind of uh, same level of tones and the way that the footage uh, looks because these clips are applied on the lens before the footage is shot. Another consideration is about the lenses being used. These lenses are slow uh, and there's a lot of dark scenes in this clip so you will see quite a lot of grain uh, this is not because uh, necessarily the footage is grainy, but it's a result of using 2.8 lenses. 2.8 lenses, in my opinion, should not be used for any dark uh, scenes. Um, so if you see that the footage is noisy, it's because of that. Final Cut Pro and create a standard library and a, and a standard project. Um, you can then import the clips and start seeing what kind of adjustments are available. Um, there's some things that are interesting to note immediately. Um, because the clips are marked as high dynamic range, when you look at them, they look clipped. So there's a scene here with this young lady, and you can see that the, the exposure and the colors are off. This is because um, Final Cut Pro um, interprets ProRes RAW as high dynamic range, which is correct. So if you activate the show HDR as tone mapped in the viewer, the clips then will look correctly, uh, although tone mapped on your monitor. Um, one of the challenges that you will see uh, is quite hard to obviously squeeze the 12 stops maximum dynamic range of ProRes RAW into your standard REC 709 project that is uh, offering at best uh, 10 stops. So it is actually difficult to replicate this kind of look in your project. When we look on the, on the settings here, in, in Final Cut, you go on settings, uh, you see now the various adjustments possible. Um, one thing that we notice is that color temperature is not adjustable, um, so unfortunately um, is, um, you know, kind of takes out Olympus cameras for underwater use. Uh, however, uh, ISO and exposure offset are adjustable and you can see the effect of those um, is identical. So if I just take the exposure of set to minus one or I change this ISO setting to approximately 1600, it's pretty much the same thing and you can see that with the waveform monitor too. Um, I want to say that obviously this 3072 is not an existing uh, ISO uh, value um, so I'm not sure if this was shot in auto ISO. Um, so if you, for example, go on, uh, you know, this has got an ISO 3072 to 6400, you know, all you're doing is obviously blowing uh, the highlights. And if you go to 800, it's obviously recovering more of these tones, but then, you know, the lady is resulting quite dark. Um, because this is a global adjustment, um, again, 
like everything in video, you need to get it right in camera. So if you were hoping that this ISO adjustment is you know, miraculously giving you other options, that's actually not really the case. Okay, let's now drop the clip on the timeline. And here you get the, the warning. You're adding an HDR clip to an SDR project. Bright content will be clipped in this project to adjust the image brightness, apply a color correction effect. So when you then look at how this looks in the timeline now, you see that it's actually clipped. The colors are off and it doesn't look good at all because now Final Cut Pro is applying a Rex in 09 space to the project and therefore tone mapping is no longer effective. So what you need to do here is either to apply an HDR tool effect, drop it on the timeline, and this will convert to Rec 709 here. Um, and you can see that actually, because of the limitation of Rec 709, you still cannot see the clouds anymore. Whilst if you go to the media browser, the clouds are there, but the clip is tone mapped and looks unnatural. Um, so, you know, the fact that you're working in a color space that has got limitation doesn't mean that you can overcome this, <laughs> this limitation. The limitation remains there. So it's up to you now to understand uh, what to do. Um, another thing that is important to understand is that um, you can achieve a very similar effect without doing an HDR conversion by applying a, a LUT. Unfortunately, Final Cut Pro does not have uh, LUTs for, for uh, Olympus, but you can use a Panalonic Vlog LUT. Um, and this gives you a slightly different result than the, the apply of the, of, uh, of the Final Cut Pro uh, HDR to SDR compression. So I later in, in this video, I'll show you some comparisons of the Final Cut Pro HDR to Rec. 709 uh, compression uh, versus the Vlog uh, LUT uh, applied. Um, whatever you do, you do need to do something because otherwise, um, you know, the footage cannot be used uh, as is. And, and at that point in time, you have then a starting point uh, for grading. Uh, personally, uh, I, I like more the effect of, of the LUT because they bring the, the shadows. For example, if you look at this clip here, again, it's giving you the same message. Um, if you look at what the HDR, HDR tools does to your clip here, see here, you see that it's crushing the blacks quite a lot, and we can see this on the on the waveform. See the waveform here. Obviously, it's clipped here. See, it's over the 100, and it's clipped also on the black. Put the HDR2. There's a bit of compression, but it looks still a bit dark. Um, if you do the log conversion. the shadow performance is better and that this is a res as a result of a different behavior of a of log curve. So just to to see here, see the log here 7%. So this is the footage as started here. See clipped on both sides, clipped on the highlights and clipped in illegal range also here on the zero. This is the effect of the HDR2. The line is below 7, so see the darks are quite dark. And this is the effect of a Vlog LUT, which will set the minimum in, within legal range and therefore look better on a REC 709 calibrated monitor. The Atomos website is one where the young lady is inside the barn looking outside. Now this is a, a very good one to show you know, the effect of the progress row in a REC 709 timeline. So the lady is looking, the young girl is looking outside and you can see the, the window is completely clipped. If you apply the HDR tool, some more of the outside is showing. Obviously, if you apply a log compression, um, much more of the outside will, will show. See here, now you can see the trees as well as a lot of stuff inside together with in a good amount of, of grain and noise. But overall, this is a better result than the simple HDR to SDR uh, mapping. And you know, you can go and, and, and change and choose other log curves if you like. For example, you can choose a, a, a Canon uh, CinemaLAT um, uh, 
instead of the Panasonic. They, they all slightly different. Canon starts higher at 8%, Panasonic 7%, um, but these, in my opinion, provide um, a better display on the Rec. 709 than simply applying the HDR tool, which ends up with a lot of uh, crushed blacks. Um, but you know, it, it's, up, it's up to you, um, you know, what, what you prefer to use for your project, and certainly, um, you know, the, the option provided by uh, Olympus and Atomos with this adjustment is, is a pretty interesting one um, because it, it does give you some options not otherwise available uh, with normal adjustments in, in, in Final Cut Pro but it's definitely not the recipe to cure all issues with your footage. Uh, one of these issues is noise. Um, if you look at other part of the uh, clip um, you can see that you know there is considerable amount of noise, chroma noise here and luminance noise combined uh, and this is because the the sensor being used is small uh, and also I mean to be frank here the choice of lens is really poor um, you know shooting this this scene with a f2.8 lens is, is, is not really what you do um, but nevertheless um, you know this is a welcome addition to the capabilities of micro for third cameras and, and, and to Olympus and, and, and as such, you know, this should only be praised.